I think on Sunday that he's out of hiding now. Um, yeah, um, yeah, because he had been um, so assaulted and everything he was going through was tremendous. He spent about uh, three weeks uh, actually in hiding, and and he he was so embarrassed to talk to me. But we talked we we talked just about every morning, and. His, his hair was just going berserk. His hair was worse than Donovan's. Uh, and and he, he, had, he had this big, long, real long, shaggy beard. And I told him he looked like John the Baptist in the wilderness. But um, he, about the same as Alan's, but just but he's a lot more curlier. But anyway, um, uh, his, his mom and dad, they got back home and they needed to survey what was happening in the in the city, so he got back home um, and got cleaned up. Um, when, the, when he does go to town, he goes down actually wearing a mask, and not, not because of uh, the pandemic or COVID or anything. But that's just a way to cover his face, uh, because there's thousands, millions of uh, Pakistanis that walk with face coverings on anyway. So he is, he's handling it that way. Uh, I talked to him this morning, and he said, he said, he said Bishop, please uh, continue to pray uh, for, for my wife, and many of you know that uh, she had she had a miscarriage, and she's actually living with her mom and her mom and her mom and family right now because of where he was. And hopefully, in the next few days, she'll be back with Shazad. Uh, but um, I'm only sharing this with you because many of you have said, you know, Pastor, you you want you want me to keep you up to date. Um, <coughs> that he's getting ready to he's wanting to take her to a private hospital because the that general hospital is uh, it's. It's all Muslim, and, and he's, she's associated with him, and, and he's, he's, I shouldn't say afraid, but he's really concerned that they would even kill her in that hospital on purpose. So um, they're coming up, they need to come up with $2,500 so she can go to a private hospital and get this DNC that she needs. So he, uh, she, he, he brought that up again this morning, and I just wanted to share with the body. I want you to pray for them, okay? Uh, we're blessed. The fact that openly we can do this, you know, we, we can go stand on the corner of um, the police station, fire station, and, and, and a Tascadero and proclaim and declare the word of the Lord out loud. So we are blessed. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and, and he's just going through it, so he definitely needs, needs our prayers and needs our, our support. Praise God. Um, I think that's it. Pray for, pray for Pastor Chase. Uh, he's really suffering this week in Hawaii. <laughs> you feel how many feel sorry for him? There we go. <laughs> uh, no, he, he's 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 taking some time off with some of his family. He's in, he's in Hawaii, and um, and I'm, it's good for him, my man. So we speak a blessing over. Praise God. Erlen, are we ready? All right. How many brought your Bibles? Okay, I hope you brought your Bibles and your notepad. Okay. I'm, 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 uh, I know I always say this, but I'm going to say it over and over and over and over again. You come to the house of God, you need to bring your, you need to bring your textbook. You, need, you, don't, you don't go to school without your textbook. Okay? You, 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 you need to get your, if in a, and if you don't have a Bible, let me know, and I'll make sure you get one, okay? But it's very, imp it's very important that we be in the house of God and have the word, have the word of God. Praise God. Um, for many, many of you know that over the past few weeks, we've done something I've never done before. We started in, uh, with the alphabet. We started in the A's, and we've kind of gone each week about, with about, you know, two or three words. Uh, come up with and and what I do I go in my office and I pray I said Lord I, I you know I know we're you know this week we're in the ends Lord and there's tons of words in the Bible regarding the ends but I wanted to find out really what could I speak that's going to make an investment in your life this is this is vital so tonight we're really we're going to be talking about three words new Name and noise. New name and noise. Okay. You take your Bibles and you turn to the book of uh, 
of John chapter 15. John chapter 15. This is one of the passages that uh, you that have a Bible have a red letter edition. It's all in red, and for you that don't, don't understand what that means, um, it's not in black, it's in red, and normally the words, not normally, the words that are written in red are the words that Jesus spoke. So in this one passage, especially, Jesus is speaking. So the words that I read, these are not my words, these are not some other author's words. God is speaking to us. Amen. How, how many really want God to speak to you? All right, then we're going to find it a good, a good portion of, of this passage. Okay. Uh, I, I hope tonight that the things we talk about, it's going to make a transition in you. Okay. Because I've got to get you from being on the outside to the inside. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. John chapter 15. I'm the true vine. Oh, yes, okay. Doesn't have the word Jesus. Okay. I didn't say Jesus. <laughs> it's okay. Come on. Come on, let's get here. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. You need to know what a husbandman is. A husband is the caretaker, the one who's taking care of the vine. Jesus identifies himself, and he says, I am the true vine. It's interesting, it says, I am the true vine, because there are many vines, but there is only one true vine, and Christ is that vine. Okay? I, I really want you to tie into this. Every branch, what? what? Every branch what? In. Everybody say in. in. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit is taken away, and every branch that abideth uh, that, that it purges it, and it uh, may bring forth more fruit. Verse 3. For you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Verse 4. Abide what? In Abide in me and I in, in you. Then we, go, then we go on down, and it says, Except ye what? Abide in me. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth what? In me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Verse 6. If any man abide not what? In me. We can go on and on. Throughout this entire passage, it, talk, it uses the word in, and as far as the title is concerned, my title was, I'm into that. There's something important about being in. Look at me. If you're not in, that means you're out. You can't be partially in and partially out. If you're partially in and partially out, you're out. We've got to get to the place that we're in. A plant will never grow until you get that plant in the ground, and the deeper it is in, the more substantial it becomes. So we have people that go to church. They go to church but they're not into Christ. And they don't know why their life is falling apart. I'm having a hard time serving God. It's because you've got shallow roots and you've chosen to have shallow roots. You need to get some deep roots. Here's what I found out about roots. A root will always look for water. We planted, some time ago, we planted poplar trees in our yard. And the roots of a poplar uh, tree, they, 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 they're, they're prolific. They just go, they go and go. We planted uh, uh, poplars on one side of our yard, and it starts springing up in our backyard, in our front yard, because the power of those roots were always looking for water. Christians that desire to want the water of life, you really want to know God. You want more than just coming to church. You want more than just religion. I really want to know God. All of a sudden, you're going to get a root system that's going to seek for water, and the more water it gets, the better the fruit it is. 
So this passage here says, in. If you're not in, you're what? Out. Out. You can't be partially in. Here's the problem with so many people that, that, that go to church. They go to church. They like going to church. It sound, it, 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 but that was really good. But yet at, yet at home, their life isn't, hasn't necessarily changed. You know, They have a Bible, but they don't get yeah. into the Bible. They know Jesus, but they don't get yeah. into Jesus. We got to get to the place that we, we, we got to get this stuff in us. A man that's dying of thirst, pour water on his belly. It'll help at all because you got to get that water in him. You want your relationships to work? Then you, may, you need to make an investment and get into that relationship. I've never found anybody that's really committed to the Lord Jesus Christ in, in their church, and they're involved in their church, that their lives are falling apart. It doesn't happen. So we've got to come to a place that we make a commitment. And everybody say commitment. Amen. we got to make a commitment to be in. I choose to be in. You've got to get inside. So I'm into that. I'm into winning now. I want to win. So tonight I want to address, first of all, new. I don't know about you, but I like new stuff. Huh? And I, you know, and yeah, I, I, and the truth is, well, I'll just say this. A lot of the old stuff, the antiques, they're better than all this new stuff. Okay? Because they have character. They're built proper. But that's because the work bit got in to making that product. It wasn't a semi line. It wasn't just mass produced. New. No. Listen to the one of the definitions of new. New no is something that has never been ever seen or discovered. Wow, that's new. It's never been ever seen or discovered. It's new. One definition of new. So my, what my question is, what new thing have you learned about God? What have you discovered? You've been saved all these years, and all of a sudden you read the, you read the book that has been there over and over and over, and all of a sudden it comes to life. and said, I've never seen that. Because there, I, I'm telling you, I've been in ministry 50 years, and I'm reading the Word all the time, and all of a sudden I kind of go, where did that Word come from? Where did that passage? It's always been there. But I, 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 always, I probably always glossed over it, but all of a sudden God uh, reveals something to me, and it became new. I was talking to someone just this morning, and, and they said, uh, Pastor, you know, you know what the Lord revealed to me yesterday? He says, and she was, she was talking about scripture. She says that the Bible says that, you know, because uh, we, always, we always say that the Father is going to judge all things, but the scripture says that Jesus does the judging. She goes, did you know that? I go, yeah. That's what Calvary was about. He judged all our sins at Calvary. He's the judge. But to her, that was new. Something never seen before, something never been discovered before. A new thing is an original, is not a copy, is not enhanced, is not remade. It is brand new. I like this. Let's see what the scripture says about this. Therefore, if any man, what? Be in Christ. He is a new creation. New creation. Not you just got saved and all of a sudden you're, you're that same sinner that you used to be, but, but your whole life becomes new. 
really what I'm going to help you with tonight the, it, because you're going to go to bed tonight. And if, if you wake up tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning is going to be a brand new day that you have never, ever seen before. You've never discovered it before. Brand new things. Therefore, if anyone be in Christ, he is, he is a new, absolutely brand new creation. Something that is made out of nothing. I've, I've taught on this before, the difference between uh, created and made. Creation comes out of nothing. Made comes out of something that was already created. So, man was created in the image of God. When I say man, I'm talking about humanity. We're created in the image of God. You came out of the mind and the heart of God. No one ever had ever seen this creation before. That creation that God made was brand new. No, nothing had ever discovered man before. God created Adam and Eve at the same time, but he made them at different times. They were equal in creation, but they were made at different times. So God said, let us make man in our image. And then what God did, God made man. And what did he make it out of? He made it out of what he had previously created. And then he made, he, he made man in his image and his likeness. And later on, after he had communed with uh, Adam for a long period of time, then he comes along and he puts Adam to sleep and he reaches into Adam what he had made out of what he created. And he pulled out a rib and out of that rib he made the woman. But even God, watch this, even God had to go in to what he created in order to bring the miracle out. Tell you what, you got to make your mind up. I'm tired of just going to church. I need to get into church. This stuff works when you get into it. Lamentations uh, chapter 3 verse 22 says this way, and the mercies of God are new every morning. Wow. I don't know about you, but I, I thank mercy. Yes. Amen. You know, all the time that I start acting ugly and I throw a fit and everything else, you know, and God gives me his grace and I wake up in the morning and then God says, son, my mercies are going to be new to you. Wow. Every morning, every morning, you get up in the morning, that's God's grace. You didn't get up because you were so healthy. You didn't get up because you were so smart. You got up because of the grace of God. Now, if you got up because of the grace of God, means that God has given you another opportunity to do what you need to do. That's what God wants you to do. God's mercies are new. Every month, the rest of that verse says, we thank God for his faithfulness. I am so glad that God is faithful. I'm so glad that God does not go back on his promises. Now you got you got to get there is going to come a, there there's going to come a day sooner or or later that you're going to stand before God and you tell it you may you may get into heaven because you gave your life to Jesus <clears throat> but all your works are going to stand before God and your works are going to be questioned. And God is going to take my works, watch this, and God is going to put them in the fire. And that which is holy, that which is right, that which is pure, that's right. It's, 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 it's going to be a treasure. But all that stuff that we profess that we did, in, that we did for Christ or we did in the body of Christ and we, we did it for ourselves, the Bible tells us that he's going to let those things be wood, hay, and stubble. Isaiah. Chapter 43, verse 19. Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. God says, I'm getting ready to do something new. What God is getting ready to do, it is going to blow your mind. Amen. Amen. 
that he's going to do something that you have never seen before, and people are going to wonder where did that come from, and you're going to understand that it is the newness of God. Wow. Listen, I'm not, I'm not negating the tough times that we go through. I mean, some, some of you have gone recently in the fire. But just because you're in the fire does not mean that you don't get a chance to dance with Jesus. That's what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said. They went into the fiery furnace. And they were talking among themselves. Hey, guys, there's... Wasn't it just three of us that got put in here? Yeah, but I see someone else. And he looks like the Son of God. Oh, someone needs to get this. I know you don't like it because I don't like it. But sometimes you've got to get into the furnace in order to see God in a whole different light. And this too shall pass. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 and 20 through 24, that you put off, in other words, shed, your old, shed the old skin, get rid of the, 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 snake, the snake mentality, put off the old concerning your former conduct, the old man that grows corrupt according to the deceitfulness of, of lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and put, put on the new man which was created according to God in the true righteousness and holiness of God. Now, that verse there says what to do. We got the idea that we want God to do all this stuff. We want God to change us. We want God to do this. We want God to touch our life. No, God says this. Everybody look at me. God says this. You put off your old nature. There's something you got to do. You got to make a decision. I want to start living in the newness of life, but I'm still trying to do that with my old nature. I got to make up my mind. I'm ready to clean my house. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to do something about this. I, I need to get rid of my old nature, and I need to put on the new nature, and I do that by a renewed mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. How do, how, how do, we, how do we get the mind of the Lord right here? You, tell me, you want to understand an author? Read their book. I went to high school in Salinas, John Steinbeck country. Pretty good writer, but the guy was a nut. But we had to we we had to read books about John uh, uh, about Steinbeck, and we had to go down to Cannery Row, and you know, and and just read this book told us a great deal about who he was and what he was going through. You really want to know God? You're not going to do this by letting this sit on your shelf. You're not going to do this by occasionally pick up your phone and read a verse or two. You need to get yourself into the Word. Is this making sense? Yep. You've got to get into the Word. Daily, you've got to make your mind up. I, 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 I just don't want to, I just don't want to exist. I, if, if all the stuff the pastor is talking about, if, if all the stuff is real, that's the God that I want to know. I'm saying to so many people, you know, uh, my kids, my grandkids, everything else, you know, and I'll ask, I'll ask the question, have you had your devotions today? No? Nine times out of ten, those that are not having honest devotional time with God, their world, their lives are falling apart. And then when all hell breaks loose, who's the first one they blame? Their mama. No. <laughs> who's the first one they blame? They blame God. Or they blame the devil. Why is the devil doing this to me? The devil is not doing this to you. The devil's sitting back. He's having a heyday because he knows he has convinced you to stay out of the book. God's mercies are new every morning. Number two, name. Boy, there's something important about the name. If you look up the original word for name, it is the word authority. That's why it says, in my name, by my authority, you can do this. 
there's something important about a name. I don't know if, 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 if all you if, you, if you know what your name means, you know, and if, you're, if the name that you have, if it's a pretty name, but it's, it's a bad name, don't worry about it, because you're saved, you're going to get a new one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and we haven't talked about it, but Pastor Dorothy, what does Dorothy mean? God's gift. Yeah. What does, Ga what does Gabriel mean? Messenger. Wow. So, yes, so there's something important about your name. Vic, what does Victor mean? Victorious. Victorious. There's some, the, I don't know. What, what, what does Mary mean? Is that because I, I yes, know. I think it is. I think it's mother. Yeah, someone with a mama's heart. Yeah. Sarah Kate, what, what does Sarah mean? Princess. Princess. <laughs> there's something important. How, how many of you ever watch on TV, you watch Frasier? Remember when Frasier was on? Anybody ever watch Frasier? His wife's name was Lilith. Isn't that a pretty name? Really, it's a very pretty name. Lilith. It sounds good. You know what it means? Night demon. Yeah. So, 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 so we got to be very, very careful. I'm saying, let's talk about names for a minute. You got to be very careful on what you call yourself. You make a mistake, the first thing you say, I'm so stupid. Hello? Start so calling yourself all kind of names that don't align up with Scripture. There's something very important in a name. Let me give you, let me, let me, let me give this. The word name is a, it's a word or a set of words by which a person animal, place, or thing is known and addressed or referred to. You're looking up your name, aren't you? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is really why, why we do what we do, because we're trying to provoke something in you. I want you, I want you to be better. I want you to raise the standards of holiness and righteousness of, of, in your life. You know, um, God, 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 God was a master at, ch at, at name changes. That was a master. Someone's name is Daughter of God. What was that? Come on. Selena, Daughter of God. Okay, now, let me, I'm a, let Serena, Selena, look at me. <laughs> you just heard that your name is Daughter of God, that God is your father. <laughs> you know, so therefore, you have the right to be a mighty woman of God. You got the blood of Jesus in your life. Amen. Yeah, you do. Okay. So when we understand this, then we attempt to start living out who we are. I, I knew my name was Messenger. I knew, I knew Gabriel was one of, one of the archangels of God. So therefore, I want to live according to my name. I told you this a long time ago, and then I'll get back to this. And, and when I was in grade school, you know, uh, every, every year my, my parents would go to uh, parent teachers night, and I was sitting there, and all my teachers, I mean, I'm telling you, every teacher would say, you know, you have such a wonderful son. He is so respectful. He, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a jewel, he's a treasure to have in class. And I'm sitting there just beaming. But every teacher would say, except he just talks too much. <laughs> he visits with everybody in the class. You know, I didn't know that, at, I didn't know at seven, eight, nine years old, you know, what God was doing. But I think even at that time, I was starting, I was starting to live out my nature. The messenger. The messenger. Absolutely. So we want to start living out who we, who we really are. I told you God is a master of changing names. God, God dealt with, well, first of all, let's, let's go to Adam and Eve. God gave uh, Adam the name. Uh, Adam. Dirt man. <laughs> the first. The first man, okay? And then we find out that later on God gave his wife a name and called her Eve, okay? God was a master at giving names. So he deals with Abram, and he deals with Sarai. And he starts dealing with them, and he says, from now on, Abram, your name no longer shall be Abram, but it is going to become 
Abraham. He put the H in there because the H represents the name of God. So later on, he says to Sarai, no longer your name is going to be Sarai. God removed the I and he put an H and it became Sarah. The H represented the name of God. So God was a master of changing names. God dealt with Belshazzar, you know, and, uh, and gave him the name Daniel. He dealt with Jacob, who Jacob means scammer, uh, a con man. But he wrestled with God all night on my, uh, Mount Peniel, and, and, and he was there. And, and, and Jacob said, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. And that day, the, the, the angel of the Lord touched, touched uh, uh, Jacob's hip. And the Bible says that he limped for the rest of his life. But at my point out, he got two things. He picked up a limp, and he got a new name. From now, on, from now on, your name will not be Jacob. Your name will be Israel, the man that contend with God and won. Wow. I want to say this. Don't trust anybody that they don't have a limp. They don't have a limp. Israel picked up a limp, a sign to him. And, and, oh, and we don't ever talk about Israel the man that limped. We talk about, uh, we, we talk about uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We talk, we talk about Israel. We talk about this. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, I think every time he looked at himself, he was walking like this. It was a reminder that he had been touched by God. Some of you that are here tonight, you're, you're a product of rape, or you're a product of a, of a divorce, or you've been incarcerated, or you had a drug problem. We go on down the line, all of us probably, some form or fashion, got a limp. Don't despise the limp. Get touched by God, and God will give you a new name. Glory to God. You know, people, people always remind you of your, of your past. You need to let them know, that is not who I am. And when the devil starts reminding you, uh, reminds you of your past, you just let the devil know about his future. <laughs> that is not who I am. I'm a new creation. Wow. God said about, God says, Mary, and you shall give forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. Revelation 2.17 says, God will give us a new name written down in glory. Wow. There's something, something, about, something about new and something about a name. Be very careful how you name yourself. Look what the, words, look what the scripture says. Uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 1. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor better than silver or gold. A good name. I want to walk this community and I want people to be able to say, I know who he is. Yeah. I, don't want, I don't want to walk people and people shun me. Oh no, there he comes. No. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, Pastor Dorothy and I we were in town the other day, and uh, where were we? For, oh, we were at TJ. What's that? TJ Maxx. We're getting our stuff, and we, we matter of fact, we we had to buy some luggage. And and Pastor Dorothy said, you know, and of course you're welcome to open luggage. And the guy looks at me and he says, "If I can't trust the bishop and his wife, wow. he knew." He just knew who, who I was. So we talked about it. We leave there and we go over to, to uh, Walmart for Pastor Dorothy gets some, gets some, new, some new glasses and we're just talking and she looks at me and she says, aren't you Bishop Gabe? You know what that told me? Everybody look at me. That told me I need to be very careful how I walk. Yes. Because God has given me favor. God has given me a good name. I don't want to do anything that's going to besmirch the God-given name. Are you following me? Yeah. Amen. Yeah, that's what God wants. Honorable. 
Yvonne, you got a good name. And I don't, I don't mean Yvonne, but I've talked to people that have said, does Yvonne, Yvonne Campbell go to your church? I said, yeah. And they tell me how wonderful you are. I said, have we talked about the same Yvonne Campbell? <laughs> no, no, no. And, 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 and just wholeheartedly agree, you got a good name. Don't worry about it, what anyone else says. You know who you are in Christ, and people are taking notice because you keep a standard of a high profile. God wants to give us a good name. Start striving towards having a good name. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, Isaiah says this, The nature shall see your righteousness, and the kings of glory shall be called by a new name. Uh, uh, out of the mouth, which the Lord will give you. The nations will see your righteousness. Wow. We've got to start living our life that the nations will see our righteousness. I put on Facebook just the other day that we're making plans to be in, in Zambia uh, in September. And so many people have already responded. And basically it said, you know, Bishop, I'm looking forward to it because we know who you are. And just start, you know, and I, I, this is an ego, and I'm not letting this stuff go to my head. I'm just saying that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want people to say, no, I don't want to be around that. I'm, I'll never show up. I want them to be where God is, and I want to keep a standard of holiness and righteousness. John chapter 15, verse 16, and that's the passage that we were in. You did not choose me. But I have chosen you, and I have appointed you that you shall go and bear fruit, and that your fruit shall abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my authority, in my name, he will give it to you. Okay? You know, how many times we make this, we make this statement? Well, I remember when I accepted Jesus. <laughs> For all of us, that is really such a dumb statement. No. You need to realize when Jesus accepted you. He, he knew everything about you, and he accepted you anyway. He knew your horrible, but you came to a place of repentance, and he says, yeah, I choose you. Wow. In grade school, I was, honestly, physically, I was the run of the litter. I got a picture of myself. I was cooking at my dad's restaurant. And I was about 13 years old, but I had my little apron on and had my little, my little hat on. I'm flipping hamburgers. And the woman at the, at the front, he, she looks, she says, oh, he's so cute. My dad said, how old do you think he is? Oh, he's about six. <laughs> you know what I wanted to do? <laughs> I, I didn't, you know. I, 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 was, I, I was always small. You know, and then when, when the teams were picked, you know, they, you know, they pick, they would pick Vic. Yeah. Yeah. They pick Brett, you know, they might, they, 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 they would pick Ron. They, they picked these big guys. You got to me? Oh no, we got him. But then they found out I could run. Then they found out I could fight. Then they found out. And all of a sudden, you know, be, because I, 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 I proved myself. I'm going to tell you something. You need to get a hold of God. Let God give you that new name. Lift up the standards. Wow. Because the moment you let the devil know who you are, he will quit picking you. Hello? As soon as the devil knows who you are, I'm a child of the Most High God. And the kingdom of God is within me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And the devil will quit. The devil will quit. I tell you, the devil really picks on those who are giving up their throne rights. There comes a time that you'll take a stand. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to stand because God is going to do a brand new thing in my life. The third word, noise. A noise is a sound especially a loud sound, sometimes an unpleasant sound, that it causes a disturbance or an interruption. Noise. Noise isn't always bad. 
A cheer is noise. A roar is noise. One of my greatest joys is watch the, listen to the laughter of a toddler. Huh? Matter of fact, something comes up either on Facebook or TV. Pastor Dorothy says, honey, come here. And she's got to show me the nice little killie, this little kid with a belly laughter. Yeah, just make a noise. Something's important about a noise. This is why I'm saying when you pray, open up your mouth. You become a disturbance to the devil. Amen. I'm not going to approach God in a whisper. I'm going to let the devil know, I am a man, I'm a woman of God. Raise up your voice before the Lord. The Bible says when we get to heaven, that the angels are going to start shouting, holy, holy, holy. It's amazing. Uh, Isaiah talks about that. And, th and that phrase is called a trisagion. It is, it is three holies, which means holy to the Father, holy to the Son, and holy to the Holy Ghost. So the angels stand before God, and they will declare a great noise, holy, holy, holy. Come on. Let's, I want you to make a noise with me. I want the people on, on, on the video hear a noise here, okay? Three times. Holy, holy, holy. Yes. Something happens when we decide to make a noise. Wow. Noise interrupts the norm. <coughs> noise interrupts the, nor the norm. It's amazing. Go into a crowded place and say, Buddha. No one will stop. Go in there and say, Hare Krishna. No one will stop. You go in that crowd and say, all you got to do is say, Jesus! Yes. Everybody will stop. Because the name of Jesus makes a difference. Amen. I've been by the bedside of either dying victims or close to death. And there's something about standing there and declaring out loud the word of the Lord. It's amazing how God created the body. People will be in a coma, they, and their eyes can be open. They, they cannot see. They can't move their limbs. They're just laying there. But the last thing to go is they're here, is they're hearing. So therefore, when I'm in the room, I'm very careful about the words that come out of my mouth. I don't speak hopelessness. Well, he or she, they're about gone. No, I thank the power of God. And I start speaking. I bring a noise to the deafness of the dying. Noise. David writes this way in Psalms 100. Make what? A joyful noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. I mean, most of the time, gladness is a noise. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a whisper. Thanksgiving. No, come, come before the Lord with singing. Amen. You got to make a noise. In order to sing, you got to make a noise. So we come to the place. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to make it. Amen. You know, I'll tell you, if you're in a place, and it's your next impossible to pay your bills. You are broke. You got two choices. I can complain about being broke, or I can speak about mouth, and I can prophesy that this bill is going to get paid in Jesus' name. You got two choices. So I choose, since I, there's nothing I can do about it anyway. I, 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 oh, I've, I've done this so many times. I've, I've, I've picked up my empty wallet. Lord, I got bills to pay. I don't have, but I thank you, Lord God, that, that my needs are going to be met. Lord God, you are Jehovah Jireh, and you're the one who provides. Thank you, Lord. I prophesy to that which I'm missing out on. I'm telling you, I don't know how it works, but somehow it works. So you got two choices. You can complain or you can praise. Yes. Amen. You can cry or you can start crying out loud. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, 
all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Because you need to know that the Lord, he is God, and he has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. There's three things here talks about. With thanksgiving, you, you give th- thanksgiving isn't quiet. Praise isn't quiet. Blessing his name isn't quiet. Amen. So I've made up my mind. I'm going to get into this thing. I'm going to start declaring the power of God in my life. I'm going to start prophesying these things. I'm going to watch what God is going to do. Verse 5. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. It's interesting. In Mark chapter 2, Jesus goes into Capernaum. And he used this phrase. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. Listen to this. And it was noised that Jesus was in the house. Wow. All of a sudden, Jesus shows up and the chatter starts. Jesus is in the house. Glory to God. Can you imagine what it's going to be like when you start carrying a countenance of God upon your life and you show up and people are going to start saying, oh man, this is going to get, it's going to get down. But you know what? I don't know where he's at, but I just saw Robert McCain show up. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't know how this works. You know, you know that Kim that used to get beat every day and now she's in the Christ, really in the Christ, and all she can do is bring good news? I, just, I don't know where she's at, but I know she's in the house. Something happens. When men and women serve God, and not, they're not afraid to make a noise. Amen. Glory to God. They took notice that Jesus was in the house, and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room about to receive them, no, not even about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they came unto him, uh, bringing uh, a, a, a sick man of, the, of the palsy, uh, which was born of four, and they could not come nigh unto him because of the media. Excuse me, because of the press. And they uncovered the roof and he, uh, where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let him down in the bed, the sick of the palsy. And when Jesus saw their faith, I'm going to start wrapping this up here. The reason you need to get in the Word, the reason, the reason you need to be in prayer, the reason you get serious about this, because faith is visible. Faith, faith is not an invisible force. Faith, faith is visible. Faith is not what you think. Faith is not what you feel. Faith is you stand upon the principles of God and acting upon that which God has said. Yes. So the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, and it wasn't talking about the man that had palsy laying on, laying on, a, on, a, on a pallet, the four guys that were letting them down, when Jesus saw their faith, he turns around and he says to the one that's dying, son, your sins have been, been forgiven and your body's healed. Wow. He said that, he said that out loud and everybody in the room heard <coughs> the noise. They heard what Jesus said. So God wants you to start enjoying new things. How about you? I can't wait to wake up tomorrow morning because tomorrow morning is going to be a new day. Yes. You realize tomorrow morning when you get up, nobody in the world has ever seen your tomorrow. <laughs> and nobody in the world is going to mess up your tomorrow except you. And you do that by trying to make your tomorrow a duplicate of today. Yeah. That you're trying to bring all the garbage of Wednesday, and you want to put that into Thursday and start your Thursday all over again so it can look like Wednesday, so your life can be messed up, so your Friday can look like Thursday. That makes no sense. Look at me. 
forgetting those things which are behind. Quit talking about it. Quit rehearsing your loss. Quit rehearsing your pain. As Sarah Kate said earlier, some of you have been holding on to this unforgiveness thing for a long time, and the Lord is saying tonight, let it go. Let it go. Let it become dead. Bury that sucker so you can start living in the newness, in the newness of life. Glory to God. I like new things. Glory to God. Yvonne and her crew have been out of the house. <laughs> and they planted a bunch of new plants. Here's what I found out. New things won't necessarily survive themselves. They need to be tended to. They need to be watered. They need to be taken care of. And your walk in Christ, it is not going to be sustained just because you want it to be sustained. You've got to water it yourself. You've got to feed it. And God is really saying, I'll tell you what, if you feed it and you work at it, I'll give you a bountiful harvest. Glory to God. Is God good? Yes, he is. Amen. Let's, come on, stand to your feet. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you. Lord, thank you for these that watch still by way of social media. Thank you for tapping into this thing. I declare over your life the kingdom of God is going to operate for you. Things are going to change. God is going to start turning things around for you. If you will make your mind up that you are going to pursue the new things in God, that you are going to get a hold of the authority, the name of the Lord Jesus. And if, you make, if you're going to start making a positive, life-changing noise, and that, the, that the light is going to be a noisy light, it's going to run off darkness. I bless each one of you right now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you're more than welcome to call us at the Revival Center. Area code 805-434-5170. Either myself or someone from the ministerial staff will speak a blessing in and over your life. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. You that are here right now. You that are here right now.